You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. This is your host, Tim Link, and I'm so glad you're joining us today. Today we have special guest, Shana Fishman, on the line. And Shana is uh, going to talk to us a little bit about her wonderful book, Between Two Dogs, the beautiful photography she does, and uh, we're excited to have her on board. So everybody just hang tight, and we're going to have a great episode talking to Shana Fishman about her book. You're listening to Animal Rights Show on Pet Life Radio. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Yuppie Puppy City Kitty provides pet lovers an opportunity to earn up to 50% commission selling our premium pet products. Advocate Gina Brick says the opportunity to share such a quality product line with other pet lovers is amazing. The support of the Yuppie Puppy City Kitty family while working the business is a true gift. Mention special code PETLIFE when you enroll today and receive three additional products free. Find us at www.ypckpets.com. That's ypckpets.com. It's hard to find time for your furry family member. That's where Camp Bow Wow comes in. All day play and overnight camp, daycare and boarding for dogs. Everything is included. Large play areas for fun and exercise. Spacious cabins, comfy cots, even live camper cams to watch from a computer or smartphone. Camp Bow Wow offers the best care and is the place to go where a dog can be a dog. For locations and more information, visit CampBowWow.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Joining me now is Shana Fishman. Let me tell you a little bit about Shana. She is a master photographer extraordinaire. We'll put it that way. She's photographed wild lions in Kenya. Uh, she's been uh, photographing street dogs in Peru, stray cats in Jerusalem. Uh, of course, she uh, studied commercial photography at Syracuse University, and she worked with a lot of fashion photographers, some of the best in the industry. So she is a master photographer, no doubt about it. And all of a sudden, some strange reasons, she decided to photograph animals and dogs. And then she put together this lovely book called Between Two Dogs. So we're going to talk to her a little bit about that. Shana, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on the beautiful book. Thank you. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, Between Two Dogs. Well, Between Two Dogs is, it's my first book, and it's all about the relationship between two dogs. So I photographed 30 pairs of dogs, puppies and adults, or two puppies, and really just wanted to show the relationship um, between the dogs. Um, You know, some of them are joking with each other. I mean, not literally. They're playing. They're teasing each other. Some of them want nothing to do with one another. So I just wanted to show all these different relationships in the photographs. There you go. So your first book, congratulations. So let's talk a little bit about how that came about. Is this a project you've been wanting to do for a long time, or did someone approach you, or was it just woke up one day and said, hey, I'm going to take some pictures of some dogs and put together a book? (laughs) Well, I didn't wake up one day, but I certainly have always wanted to do a photography book. And I um, connected with Skyhorse Publishing, and, you know, we bounce ideas off of each other about different ideas for uh, books about dogs. And... We kept going back to this one photograph that I took early on in my career. It's of a bulldog, adult bulldog, and a puppy. And the puppy is biting the adult's ear. And everybody seems to really love that image. They just see the relationship between those two dogs. And it's humorous, and it's cute, and it's relatable. And based off that one photograph, we sort of came up with this concept of the book of, you know, showing the relationships between two dogs, and hence where where the title comes from. There you go. And and it is beautiful. All the photographs in here are fantastic, so big kudos to that. So how did you go about the selection criteria? Because I imagine there were hundreds of dogs you wanted to photograph, or did you send it out to a a notice saying, hey, if you want your dog's photograph and have a chance to be in the book, contact me? How did that process come about? Well, actually, I actually worked with an agent here in New York that I do a lot of commercial jobs with, and she did a wonderful job of helping select all these dogs and find all these different breeds. Um, I really wanted to work with, with shelter and shelter animals, um, but logistically it just um, was a little more complicated. So this route I went with working with, quote-unquote, professional dogs, 
but I, you know, lots of projects I work with rescues and um, and shelters. Um, this one in particular is, I guess, the the stars, the stage star dogs. And was there a certain a number of them that you uh, sort of had an idea that you need X number to be put into a book, or was it a matter of trying to get the best of the best and then downsizing it from there? Well, I actually, every all the dogs I photographed for the book made it into the book. So my goal was 30 sets of dogs, and that's what it ended up being. The great thing with dogs is, you know, even if they're not great in front of the camera, that's totally fine. I really just wanted to find the dogs and capture them at their best and them at their personality. And you did a great job of that. All their essences come through, and uh, they're just sweet, lovable uh Lovable dogs, all sizes, all different types. Everybody's going to love it. I'm sure they'll find their favorites in here as well. Now, tell me about working with dogs. Is working with dogs easier or harder than working with kids? And is are dogs easier or harder to work with than fashion models? That's what I want to know. Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> well, I think working with dogs is easy, but that's because I just love it. You know, I would choose to work with a dog any day over photographing a person. So easier, I don't know. I guess I guess dogs are easier for me um, just because I love it. But, you know, they always they always say, like, nobody ever wor- wants to work with kids and animals. And, well, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's challenging, but yet also they, they always upstage you. So you, you never get the – if you want the big kudos, never work with them. That's for sure because they definitely will be a, a lot cuter and get more interest than uh, you ever will. I've, I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Now, tell me about working with dogs in general and taking photographs. I mean, are there things you're doing to entice them and dis- and distract them, like through toys and treats? Or is it more of uh, just letting them go at it and you take uh, enough photos till you think you've got enough that will uh, be what you're looking for? Yeah, well, you know, every dog is different. So I have to have a lot of tricks up my sleeve, lots of toys, lots of different kinds of food, peanut butter, of course. You know, some dogs don't need anything. They sometimes will just sit there and look at you and, you know, give you every single expression you could ever ask for. Other ones, you know, do need do need some toys and some motivation. And part of it, really, for me, is just figuring out what that dog's motivation is and then using that to my advantage. That sounds good. That sounds good. Now, do their human companions, their owners, do they give you some insight on either treat motivated or toy motivated ahead of time, or do you just have to figure out what's working best for them that day? I kind of figure out what's working best for them. I come to the studio with a huge bin of toys and food. You know, some dogs, the owners will say, oh, my dogs, they'll sit, they'll stay, they're wonderful. And, you know, they get into the studio and they're just, they go bonkers. They just... <laughs> jump off the wall and run in circles and you know it's it's a new environment for them some dogs just think it's a huge dog park and they want to play um which is great when they're in the studio so you know i I usually don't ask the owner much about the dog before because it could the dog could be completely opposite in the studio as they are at home yeah and they all have their own unique personalities and how they handle things wouldn't you say absolutely yes then the number of times that i you know I hear one thing about a dog and then see something in the studio is is endless. All right. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick commercial break and let our sponsors have it. And then we'll come back and talk a little bit more to uh, Shana Fishman about her her new book, uh, Between Two Dogs. And then we'll also talk to her about uh, the whole process of putting the book together. So everybody hang tight. You're listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. When we ran out, we stopped using it. Why would you stop? Why undo all the good that's been accomplished? We thought everything was fine, and that was not a good thing. No, 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 no. He started stinking. It was awful. Shedding comes back, loss of hair, lots of dandruff. Scratching will return. His shedding will increase. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite, he would go back to his hair loss. <gasps> D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite, when I get to about three quarters. Oh no, I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. Each and every day she is getting a Dynavite. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. If it's working, don't quit. Don't do what I did and run out. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 
Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. This is your host, Tim Link, and I'm so glad you're with us today. Uh, we're here talking to uh, master photographer and now new author, Shana Fishman, and uh, discussing a little bit about her uh, wonderful uh, photo book, uh, Between Two Dogs. Uh, now, Shana, when you, you said you, earlier you wanted to put together a book, you wanted to put together a nice photo book and, and put the dogs in there. Now that you've done that, what did you think of the whole process? Was it easier than you expected to uh, get this into a book? book form or harder? What are some of the things, the challenges you ran into? I would say the biggest challenge was editing. These dogs that I photographed were so cute that editing down to two or three or four images was almost impossible. That was the biggest challenge. Thankfully, I have been able to take all the outtakes that didn't make the book and put them on my Instagram because, yeah, this this book could have been 500 pages long with all the, the cute images. <laughs> and then the Instagram, that lives on. Do you put typically one out there a day or, or several at a time, or do you just put them all out there? I try to post once a day. It, you know, it's a mix of other work, but I often, very often, maybe three four times a week, have an outtake from the book. Um, just because there are so many great images that I want to share with people. Absolutely, and that's a great way to get it out there and get messages. Do you also have people then uh, send you their photos, I'm assuming, of their pets? I do, I do. A lot of people um, you know, want to submit their dog for the next project or just show me how cute their dog is. And I, you know, I love seeing people's dogs, and every single person I meet takes out their phone to show me a picture of their dog or cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely true. I, I just recently was on a flight, and you know, uh, towards the end of the flight, everybody was just sort of striking up a little conversation, and, and you know, it was a casual about weather and what are you going to do in that city, et cetera. But then they asked me what I did, and told my work with animals, and write about animals, and host radio shows about animals, and it's like, oh, let me show you mine. Let me, oh my! And next thing you know, not only did my row of three people start talking about their animals and showing photos, but the row behind us. So okay. <laughs> it, it's truly. <laughs> Is. You know, so it's like like having your, your child there, obviously, and you get the photos out and you know, sharing with everybody. Yeah, you must see a lot of a lot of phone pictures of, of people's pets. There is, yes, and I love every one of them. And every time I go to a, a festival and uh, participate in that, you know, it's just a funny to see them, interesting to see them, all the different breeds, and even if you have a, a lot of the same breed, how they're groomed and how they're set up. It's very, uh, it's always fascinating to me. Yeah, for sure. Now, Now, with the book, the book's out there, and I know it's going well for you. What do you think is happening from there? Are you getting more people interested in the book, or do you think you're also getting folks that are interested in your work that you do to hire you for that work? What are you seeing happening, and what do you hope happens by having the book out there? I would love to do more books. You know, I've, I've got lots of ideas. Nothing in the works quite yet. I just wrapped up, or, well, am in the process of working on a project that's already out there called, we call it Cats and Hats, where I worked with a stylist, a fashion stylist, and we photographed um, shelter cats in little mini hats that she created, sort of pop culture references, like we did the Pharrell hat, we did a Donald Trump hair, and that's sort of, that was sort of my focus um, these past few months, and we'll continue that project, and who knows, that could maybe make it into a book. There you go. So your work with rescues then, how do you work with them? Are you uh, doing special projects for them or are you doing photos for them that they can put on their websites and out on the social media sites? I do all different stuff. Like the cats, we worked with a small rescue group for this particular project just to bring sort of attention to cat rescue. There's so much stuff out there about dog rescue but not cat rescue. I also worked with um, a shelter on the Southampton Animal Shelter I went out there and photographed their dogs just for them to use. You know, I really went to the shelter and I said, give me all the dogs that have been here the longest. Let's get them adopted. Let's get them great photos. And that was really just a a project for fun for, you know, me to help out the shelter. So sort of all, all different stuff. 
and giving back to them, obviously helping them out and getting uh, recognition for them to hopefully find them their uh, right and perfect forever homes. Yeah, some of the dogs that were at Southampton, you know, over a year, a uh, year and a half, two years, and I think most of them that I photographed had gotten adopted. Not Certainly not only because of my photographs. They were great dogs. They just, you know, kept being passed over, didn't have a great photo. And it's really rewarding when helping out a shelter and then seeing those animals find a home and thinking, well, maybe I had a small part in that. Absolutely. And I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. And it's true. I mean, if you have uh, an animal on television, animal in a photo, animal online uh, that has a great photo attached to it, it's going to get a lot more attention and uh, the animal does have a better opportunity to get adopted. So big kudos for you for doing that kind of work. I call it online, like online dating. Everybody wants to put the best picture of themselves on. Why wouldn't a dog or cat? Exactly. And for some people, uh, they don't have a good picture of themselves, so they find one, on, <laughs> find one and copy it over. But that's a whole different topic for a different radio show, that's for sure. All right. Well, Shana, tell us a little bit about uh, where people can uh, find your book as well as follow the activities you've got going on. Maybe give us the Instagram account, uh, those type of things, and uh, so we can keep track of all your wonderful activities. Yeah, well, you can find the book, Between Two Dogs, on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or at your local bookstore. And you can find out more information about me on my website, Shana Fishman, that's S-H-A-I-N-A, and Fishman sounds like fish and man. And my Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff is the same, at Shana Fishman. All right, sounds great. So everybody go out and check out... uh Shana's great book, Between Two Dogs, all the wonderful photos. You're going to really love it, as well as uh, follow her online. We'll post this all online so everybody can keep track of everything you've got going on. So, Shana, congratulations. The, the book, once again, is Between Two Dogs. Everybody get a copy of this and keep up the great work photographing those uh, puppies and kitties and other animals out there and helping the rescue organizations. Hey, thank you guys so much. All right. Well, we're uh, coming to the end of the show today. I want to thank everyone for listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. I want to thank our sponsors and producers for uh, making this show possible. If you have any questions for me, comments, ideas for this show, people you want to hear from most, you can drop me a line at tim at petliferadio.com. It's tim at petliferadio.com. And we'll be glad to uh, answer your questions, entertain your comments, and bring on the people you want to hear from most. So until next time, write a great story about the animals in your life. And who knows, you may be the next guest on Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have a great day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.